Hello, welcome back to the NPTEL online certification course on deep learning. So, in our previous class, we have started discussion on uh, auto encoder versus principal component analysis. So, what we had discussed in the previous class is uh, how you get the principal components from the covariance matrix of the input data. So, let me just briefly tell you uh, what we have discussed in the previous class, so that our platform for discussion on comparison between auto encoder and principal components becomes complete. So, what we presented in the previous class is that given a set of your input vectors A x, where A x we have considered to be a vector set of vectors x 1, x 2 up to say x n having n number of population, where each of these vector x is of dimension d. That means, there are d number of components in the feature vector. Then, first you find out the covariance matrix from this set of input vectors. So, the covariance matrix is given by C x is equal to expectation value of x minus mu x into x minus mu x transpose, where this mu x is the mean of the input vector. So, mean mu x is equal to sum of x over all x, where x is the set of these vectors. Once you form this covariance matrix C x, then for from this covariance matrix C x is compute the Eigen vectors and the Eigen values. So, I have set of Eigen values lambda i, where i varies from 1 to d, as d is the dimensionality of the feature vectors. And for each lambda i, I have the corresponding eigenvector E i. And once I had this E i, the set of eigenvectors, then we had formed a transformation matrix A, where A was formed as with the eigenvectors E is as rows. So, the first row was E 1, the second row was E 2 and the last row was E d. And these eigenvectors were arranged in rows in such a way that here lambda i or the lambda 1 is greater than lambda 2 and so on, it is greater than lambda t. So, an eigenvector corresponding to the maximum eigenvalue is put as first element or the first row in my transformation matrix and the eigenvector corresponding to the minimum eigenvalue is put as the last row in the transformation matrix. So, all the eigenvectors are actually arranged in rows in order of the descending order of the corresponding eigenvalues. So, once I define this uh, transformation matrix, then I have a transformation which is given by y is equal to a into x minus mu x. And this transformation is what is known as K L transformation. And from the nature of this transformation, you find that x is an input vector and a is the transformation matrix, where every row in this transformation matrix are the eigenvectors. So, every component of y is nothing but projection of the vector x minus mu x onto the ith eigenvector, which is the ith row in this transformation matrix. So, ith component of my transform vector y is nothing but the projection of the vector x minus mu x onto the ith eigenvalue. And these components of the vector y, the transform vector y is uh, are nothing but my principal components. 
and you find that this principal components are nothing but the transformation of the input vector x shifted by mu x onto the eigen vector. So, this transformation basically gives you a mapping from the input space to an eigen space and as we said the eigen vector has been orthogonal eigen space is also orthogonal. So, effectively what this trans transform and the way you obtain the data reduction is that in the transformation matrix A, where A is of dimension d by d, right? it has d number of rows, d number of columns. So, if I reduce the number of columns from the bottom, that is I remove columns corresponding to minimum eigenvalues that ensures that in the reconstruction, I will have minimum amount of error. So, that is a different analysis, which is beyond the scope of this uh, lecture. So, I assume that I truncate this transformation matrix A by reducing some number of rows from the bottom. So, what I do is I make a transformation matrix A with say p number of rows and of course, d number of columns. I am not reducing the number of columns, where this p is much, much less than d. So, using that when I go for this transformation y is equal to a into x minus mu x, this vector a that you get that will have p number of components and if I do not go for any truncation, this vector a will have d number of components. So, as I reduce the number of rows my in my transformation matrix, I go for reduction of the dimensionality. Okay. But this reduction is, is done in such a way by removing the eigen vectors in such a way that when I try to reconstruct my original x from y by an inverse transformation. So, from here obviously, x will be a inverse y plus mu x. So, as in transformation matrix A, I am not retaining all the components or all the rows. So, obviously, the reconstructed x that I will have will not be actual x, but it will be an approximation of x which is exact. Okay. So, this is what I get after redu reducing the dimensionality. So, as PCA gives you reduction in dimensionality and we have also seen that auto encoder gives you reduction in dimensionality. So, whether we can have some relation, we can establish some relation between PCA and auto encoder. We will come to that a bit later, but before that let us try to see what this PCA is actually giving you. So, to further illustrate the principal components, I have taken this binary image. So, here you find that it is a binary image where all these uh, elements which are blue, these are one that means I can say that I have pixels present in this location, in these locations I do not have any pixel. So, I can form a vector with only the pixel locations where the pixels are present. So, accordingly my population of vectors will be given by this 3, 4. Uh, so, this is 3, 4, right? sorry, this is 4, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 1, 2, 3. So, this is 3, 4, 3. Similarly, this is the vector which is 3, 4 and so on. Uh, so, all the vector positions, all the positions so I, have, I have a pixel present, I take those positions as my uh, vector population. And from this set of vectors, I compute the mean of the vectors which is mu x and in this particular case, you can compute that this mean vector will be 4.5, 4.5. So, once I have this computation, now as we said before that for principal components or for KL transformation, I need to have the covariance matrix. And we defined covariance matrix as expectation value of x minus mu x into x minus mu x transpose. So, here I have a very small example. So, from here, uh, if I try to compute that covariance matrix, so the covariance matrix for I take this as my first vector x1. So, x1 minus mu x, where mu x was 4.5, 4.5, 4 if you subtract 4.5, 4.5 from 3, 4, what you get is your x minus mu x becomes minus 1.5 minus 0 0.5. 
So, x minus mu x mi into x minus mu x transpose, if you do this multiplication, it simply becomes 2.25.75.75, sorry, yeah, 2.25.75.75 and 0.25. So, that is for the first vector in my vector population that I get. Similarly, when I compute x 2 minus mu x into x 2 minus mu x transpose in the same manner, that will give you 0 0.25, 0 0.75, 0 0.75 and 2.25. You can compute this and verify. So, this way you compute x minus mu x into x minus mu x transpose for all the vectors that we have in set of vectors x. And the expectation value is nothing but average of these matrices that you are getting. For each of the vectors, I am getting x minus mu x into x minus mu x transpose. So, in this particular case, I have 8 such vectors. So, I will have 8 such matrices and the average of all those matrices gives you the covariance matrix. So, covariance matrix in this case is nothing but if you compute that will come out to be the covariance matrix C x equal to 0 0.75, 0 0.375, 0 0.375 and 0.75. And from here, you compute the eigenvalues as I said that it will be the determinant 0 0.75 minus lambda, 0 0.375, 0 0.375 and 0 0.75 minus lambda, you set this determinant equal to 0. So, you get a quadratic equation in lambdas, you solve that and you get two values of lambda. Lambda 1 comes out to be 1.125 and lambda 2 comes out to be 0 0.375. And for these values of lambda, you compute the corresponding eigenvectors. As we said that the eigenvectors will be nothing but C x e is equal to lambda e, where C x is your covariance matrix, e is uh, the eigenvector and lambda is the eigenvalue. So, you solve those equations, you get your eigenvectors. So, it comes out to be that in this particular case, your E 1 for eigenvalue lambda 1 comes out to be 1 upon root 2 1 1. Similarly, E 2 for eigenvalue lambda 2 comes out to be 1 upon root 3 1 minus 1. Now, what comes next is the interesting one that is we want to see that what are these eigenvectors? So, I simply superimpose these eigenvectors in the same image space. Here, so here you find that if you look at this, you find that the direction of E 1, if you look at this direction, this is the direction in which your spread of data is maximum, right? And that is what we said that lambda 1 that is the eigenvalue indicates that what is the variation of data in the direction of the corresponding eigenvector. Now, similarly, lambda 2 this tells you that the variation of data in this direction is minimum. right? So, I get lambda 1 and lambda 2 and here again you find that this uh, sorry E 1 and E 2 and here again you find that E 1 and E 2 they are actually uh, orthogonal and they are centered at the centroid of the pixels. So, that also says that a KL transformation is a transformation which gives you translation and rotation operations because E 1, E 2 are nothing but rotated x 1, x 2 and this coordinate system E 1, E 2 is translated to the mean of the vectors that we have. So, this also gives you the rotation and translation transformation. right? Now, coming to the concept of uh, your principal components. So, what are principal components over here? So, I have data point this. If I take the projection of this uh, data point, see if I take the projection of this onto E 1. So, this is the projection on E 1. And this is what is the principal component. Similarly, if I project this onto E 2, this is also the principal component. So, this is the first principal component and this is the second principal component. If I want to represent this by 
a single dimension or by scalars. I will not consider uh, the projection onto E2, rather I will consider only projection onto E1, because E1 corresponds to the eigenvalue which is maximum. So, this is my first principal component. So, to think of this in other way, the principal components or the KL transformation is actually a linear transformation. So, what you are doing is given your input vector, input data, you are linearly transforming it to your principal components, right. So, principal components gives you a linear transformation or linear mapping from the input data space to the output data space. So, if I want to retain only one component, you find that that component is nothing but projections onto this eigenvector E1. So, you are project, projecting onto a line. If I want to re retain two components, I want to convert the input data into two principal components by this principal component analysis, I will take projections onto E1, I will also take projections onto E2. That means, every vector will now be mapped to a point in the plane E1, E2. So, this transformation is a linear transformation. So, given this, now can we try to establish that what will be the relation between the principal component analysis and autoencoders. So, both uh, before that just to illustrate what is the power of this principal component analysis of the principal components. You find that this is just an illustration that I have uh, this input image. So, this is the original input image and this is the image which has been reconstructed using only one principal component. And you find that the reconstruction is amazing. So, that simply says the principal components retains the structure of the data. Instead of 1, uh, uh, this original image is actually 256 by 256 number of pixels. So, you find that reduction is from 256 to by 256 to 1. So, the amount of compression that has been achieved. Instead of 1, if I use 5 principal components, then this is the reconstruction that you get. Instead of 5, if I use 25 principal components, this is the reconstruction that you get. So, here you can imagine what is the amount of compression that you are getting or what is the compression amount of compression that you are getting over here. 256 by 256 is to 256 uh, is to 25. So, that shows you what is the power of the principal components. So, this principal components using principal components, I can go for dimensionality reduction and as we have seen that using auto encoders also we can go for a dimensionality reduction. So, definitely I can establish some relation between these two. So, what we have seen is in case of principal components, this is a linear transformation from n dimensional space or say d dimensional space, you are transforming it to say two dimensional space or three dimensional space depending upon the number of principal components that you want to use. And this mapping is a linear mapping. As against auto encoders being uh, uh, neural networks which can implement nonlinear functions. So, the kind of mapping that we can use in case of auto encoders is a nonlinear mapping. That means, in other words, we can say that the principal components or the auto encoders can be thought of as generalization of principal components. So, whatever principal components analysis can do, auto encoders can also do the same thing. But auto encoder can do something more because here I can have non-linear mapping, not simply linear mapping. Whereas, in case of principal components, we have only linear mapping. Okay. So, this is what uh, I just said that given a set of data which are just red dots in this figure and I want to convert this set of data using principal component analysis into principal components. So, if I use just two principal components P C 1 and P C 2, I am transforming this set of data 
into onto a straight line as given by this pink line. Right. So, this is uh, uh, sorry, I am transforming this set of data onto a plane as defined by P C 1 and P C 2. And this being a linear transformation or linear mapping, what I can do is given this set of data, this can be approximated on a straight line where the straight line is defined in space P C 1, P C 2. Whereas, auto encoders are capable of going for imparting nonlinear transformation. So, using auto encoders, I can even go to uh, establish or to extract the nonlinear structures which are present in the data. So, it is possible the same data or auto encoder will learn the inner structure which is not just linear, but it is nonlinear as shown by the blue curve. So, all this set of data points which are red points can now be represented by points on this blue curve, whereas principal components will represent this set of data by points on the pink line. So, we will present some experiment from uh, this particular source which is given at the bottom. So, these experiments are done on MNIST data set, MNIST data set which is a public domain data set, uh, which has total, this data set is actually data set of hand written uh, digits, digits from 0 to 9. It has total 60,000 training images and uh, total 10,000 test images, all hand written character, hand written digits. Every image is of size uh, of dimension 28 by 28. That means, it has got um, 784 number of pixels. So, when you think in terms of auto encoder, at the input side we will have 784 plus 1 to take care of the bias, 785 number of neurons. Uh, dimension, dimensionality reduction from 784 to 2. So, using auto encoder as well as PCA. And then we will also talk about the reconstruction from uh, the reduced dimension, where for reconstruction the dimension was reduced to 30 from 784. Uh, for dimensionality, dimensionality reduction demonstration, it was reduced to 2 because the plane on which we will be projecting this data are two dimensional planes. So, if it is reduced to two dimensional data, then projection is uh, I can visualize it. Then the other things that uh, optimizer, which is Adam optimizer, we will come to that later. We have not yet talked about the different types of optimizers. The loss function that was considered is mean square error that we said and uh, for training 100 iterations was used. So, this is what is the experiment setup. Now, what is imp uh, this is an example of the MNIST data set. I was as I said that this is data set of handwritten digits, digits from 0 to 9. Okay. And again, this is taken from the source as uh, given at the bottom. Now, for this data set, uh, the data reduction was done using principal component analysis to two dimensional data. You remember our input was 784, right? So, using principal component analysis, it was reduced to two, two dimensional vectors and also by using auto encoders it was uh, reduced to two dimensional vectors. But in this particular case, uh, uh, no nonlinearity was used. The activation function of the neurons was linear function. And as is shown in these two data set, uh, these two outputs, you find that the output as given by PCA is almost identical to output as given by two layer auto encoder. Uh, which has just one hidden layer, right? Hidden layer and an output layer. They are almost identical. So, and this is what we said that principal component analysis is a data reduc dimensionality reduction technique. Auto encoder can also be thought of as dimensionality reduction technique. So, somewhere there must be a relation between these two, and this is what. Okay. So, you find that in some case PCA and auto encoders they give you identical results. Of course, we will have uh, difference of results as we said that auto encoders are more general than principal component analysis because auto encoders 
can impose can implement nonlinear functions okay so let us see what other results that we can obtain so this is a comparison between deep versus shallow autoencoder so on the left hand side uh, what is shown as the output of a two layer autoencoder and on the right hand side what is shown as a deep autoencoder and here you find that a deep autoencoder having multiple number of layers as the architecture of the deep autoencoder is shown on the right so deep autoencoder with multiple auto encoding layers or decoding layers can capture the structure of the data better and that is where the beauty of the auto uh, the other beauty of the deep learning comes coming to another example so if we have so in the previous case the output was from deep auto encoder without any nonlinear activation function. Now we find that uh, if we use nonlinear activation function in a deep auto encoder, then as shown in this diagram on the right, the deep auto encoder with nonlinear activation function can even capture the structure of the data better. So here you find that the different digits, this is 0. Uh, yeah, this is actually 0, set of zeros. Uh, here it is set of 1s and so on. So it can capture the inner structure of the data even better than uh, a shallow autoencoder. Okay. So that is what is uh, the beauty of autoencoders with nonlinearity. It can understand or it can learn the inner structure of the data much better. Uh, this is another example where uh, uh, it was a data reduction from articles from Reuters corpus. Uh, those scanned images were reduced to two dimensional data. So here again you find that auto encoder as compared to principal components that has captured the inner structure much better than what the principal components can do. This is just a de uh, another reconstruction example where we said that for re reconstruction, the data reduction was done up to dimension of 30. So from 784, it was reduced to dimension 30. So here, the top row gives you what was the original image. In the middle row, you have the reconstruction using autoencoder, where the autoencoder architecture is given over here, and the active function function was ReLU, that is rectified linear unit and the bottom row is the reconstruction using principal component analysis. So, the principal components again having 30 principal components. So, here again you find that though the data, data reduction was equal, the data were reduced to the same extent both using autoencoder as well as principal components. But the reconstruction using the encoded data using autoencoder is much better than reconstruction uh, from the principal components, though the reduced dimensionality was same. So that tells you what is the power of autoencoder over principal components. Earlier we have seen the power of principal components. Now it shows that uh, the autoencoders are even more powerful than principal components. Similarly, this is another example of reconstruction where we have a set of face images. So, the top row is your um, original image. The second row is again output that is the reconstruction from 30 dimensional autoencoder outputs and the bottom row is uh, reconstruction from 30 dimensional principal components. So, here again you find that the middle row, in the middle row, the data structure of the input data or the input images has been reconstructed much better than in the bottom row. So, it also shows that autoencoders with nonlinearity or deep autoencoders with deep nonlinearity are much more powerful than principal components. Uh, okay, so, let me stop this uh, today's lecture here. 
we will next talk about the training algorithms of autoencoders. Of course, the training will be back propagation training as we said earlier and the errors or the loss function for back propagation training that we will be using will be the sum of squared error loss. So, we will come back later. Thank you.